So which That's not German? today or yesterday. You can see <laughs> we had hair. Oh, beautiful, beautiful hair. But do you still have those suits, Jimmy? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> if the lapel didn't touch our shoulder, you weren't wearing it. You weren't putting it on. You could fly with those. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, you did. With all of that, Tommy, I'm assuming with Dermot that... Did he ask you? Could he do what he did? Absolutely not. <laughs> but, you know, he was a wonderful character. When we used to stay over, we, he would regale us. We would be stitches of laughter, having a few drinks yeah. in a hotel afterwards. Mm -hmm. And... One night, Jimmy suggested to him, you know, Dermot, I think there's a way you could improve your <laughs> <laughs> I had the temerity to... Uh, well, that went down like a lead balloon. <laughs> so he was so ever after referred to as, as the comedy critic. <laughs> <laughs> It seems he takes people close because, Ken, was the first time you met Dermot Wor Morgan, he was your taxi driver. Oh, he? yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. I was, uh, I was standing in the early hours of the morning with my friend Mick, Mick McLean, and we're standing on the corner of uh, the bottom of Grapple Street, the corner of, like, Trinity College there, uh, waiting for a taxi. Falling just, out of lilies. Just falling out yeah. of lilies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Couldn't get a taxi for love of my money. <laughs> and next of all, this fella pulled up in a Mercedes, an old cream Mercedes, I think he had. And he says, how are you, lads? Where are you just going? I says, Father Ted. <laughs> <laughs> he says, jump in. He says, Ken, I know who you are. He says, jump in, we'll give you... You're going to Renla. I says, yeah, yeah. So he dropped us up to Renla. Wow. And on the way from... All the way from um, Trinity College to Renla, he was doing uh, Dumphy impersonations and telling <laughs> jokes. And he had us absolutely... We didn't want the journey there. And I, said, I, told, I told him to go round again. We'll pay him extra. <laughs> but it was fantastic. It was great. That was the yeah. first time I met him. And wow. we sort of became... Incredible character. Yeah, yeah. Right. So we forgave him. <laughs> yes. you, you, you did forgive him. I'm trying to know what, what advice you were trying to pass on to him. But we'll find that out in a minute. Uh, you, 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 now, you guys grew up in Cotel, County Cabot. Could I you say it? We were actually yeah. born in Castlebreed, County Roscommon. Okay. But we were reared, Dried we left up. very young, in Coot Hill in <laughs> County Cavan. <Now, laughs> at the age of 16, though, Jimmy, you decided on going off to England. Well, there was no decision. Uh, you, <laughs> don't, you didn't decide you then. You had to go. There was yeah. nothing else. Mm. Okay. But while you and were there, you used to send song, uh, poems back. Yes. I, used to, uh, I started, um, I was apprentice engineer, and I was working... Uh, and I started rehearsing with uh, other young lads. I mean, one of those groups actually turned out to be Mud. Wow. Uh, nice uh, break. You know, Only this Christmas. Yeah. They got a break. Yeah. And yeah. then I came back. I was writing poetry at the time. And well, I used big to into poetry. Send, <laughs> send them back to Tommy. And then he started putting music to some of them. What, you what, what, you know, one of your biggest songs, pro probably your biggest song, if Mark could see me now, was, did that start out as a Jimmy Swarbrick poem? Uh, well, not a poem. Uh, we, that no, we then started writing. Uh, he came back. Mm -hmm. I left Joe and, yeah. and the Drifters. So and that's, we decided that's Joe Dolan. You were with. Yeah, I was with Joe Dolan. Yeah. From the age of 17. So well, 17. And did that end up. You ended up in America with Joe Dolan, Tommy, Absolutely. Didn't you? We toured everywhere. Absolutely. We had a great time. But, I mean, here I was, a young lad in Goodhill, playing in a little a skipper group, actually. Right. Uh, who were called the Merry Five. And when I joined them, we became six. Okay. So we had to change our name. So we called <laughs> ourselves the Jordan Nurse. And then, very shortly after that, um, I got a call from Seamus Casey, Joe's manager, uh, to see would I audition for the Drifters. So, naturally, I said no. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And so Joe, Ben, and Seamus Casey, the manager, arrived down to our house and into the front sitting room and I played the trumpet and sang for the lads. Wow. And got the gig. Wow. <laughs> you were 17 then? Just gone 17, wow. yeah. Playing the yeah. trumpet and singing at the same time. No wonder you got the gig. <laughs> My God. And, and there you are. That was it. You're through the side. <laughs> <laughs> and you went, and in America when you were there uh, with Joe Dolan, I believe that when you came back, you'd have bought a whole load of instruments and well, you'd have to sneak them in through customs so they wouldn't know that. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I bought a beautiful trumpet there. Um, we were in Vegas, and the piano player, Des Doherty, great piano player, and one night we were sharing a room, uh, three of us, and in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, the door burst open. I, myself and Jimmy Horn, shocked. What was going on? The doc, as he was known, arrived in and threw 
hundreds of dollars into the air. <laughs> he was after gambling all night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he won several thousand dollars. Wow. Fantastic. And so that was the end of the gamble, and he held on to it. We got back to New York, straight down to Manny's, which was the most famous music shop in the world. He bought a pianet. I bought a trumpet. Joey Gilhini, the trombone player, brought a trombone. I think Bre Ben bought a saxophone, Ben Dolan. And we had to muck them up and stuff to get them back into customs. Yeah. It was really tight. <laughs> so you sort of almost put a dint. <laughs> <laughs> but we got go. through anyway. But that pianet that Doc bought in Manny's that time was the first electric piano in Ireland. Wow. It was the sound of the first Drifter's record with Joe uh, singing the answer, the answer to everything. everything. Wow. Really? wow. Yeah, yeah. By the way, for anybody from Custom and Exercise, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. pass on the press. I remember we when. We paid it off. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. When Joe, when Joe Dolan, you, a quick story, when Joe Dolan used to come to the chariot, used to play in the chariot in Renla. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I, well, I was only a kid, I was only between eight and ten. So I used to, we used to run into the car park because we'd wait for the cars to come in and we'd sort of, you know, pa pa you know yeah. pack them into the yeah. car, you know. So we used to do it for the extra, for the extra few pennies or, the, the, you know, the tuppence that they might throw you, you know. And Joe Dolan used to come in in his big car and we'd go, yes, Joe, you know, everybody <laughs> knew Joe. And he'd always throw you a nice oh, tip, yeah. you know.